Hey friends, when I made this channel, I made you all a couple of promises. And one of those promises has unfortunately slipped through my fingers over these last four videos. And I'm not happy about that. So this week, we're fixing it. Let's go. Happy Thursday and welcome back to another episode of the Storycraft Society. My name is Garmin, G-A-R-M-A-N, for those who are curious. We're here to make up for something that really sucks. When I started this channel, I made a promise to everyone out there that I was gonna answer every single comment in the comment section. And that's a promise that I still intend to keep, but this last month, it's absolutely been slacking. I've done a terrible job of it, so this video is gonna be my penance for that. It's gonna be me addressing face to screen, I guess it's face to face, with a screen in between, where I'm gonna address all the comments that I've gotten on the last four videos. But that's actually gonna lead me to why I slacked on the comments on the last four videos. And that's because my day job is I work as an audio engineer and producer. And when the pandemic all started, I personally took a real hit to the work that I was doing the arts really took a big hit, and that's why I started the channel, because I had a bunch of spare time on my hands, and it was something that I could devote time to something that I was passionate about, as well as, you know, fill the void of not getting to work every day. And that leads into one of the questions that I get a lot in particularly DMs, which I think is interesting, but that's where does the music on the channel come from? And the answer is, it's mine. It's music that I wrote. It's actually on a record that I've planned to release for years and years and years, and I every year tell myself that this is gonna be the year, and every year passes, and I go, nah, I'll, I'll do it next year. But that's the fate of recording my own music when my living is recording other people's music. Because of the pandemic, work laid off, now it's starting to pick back up, and that's what caused me to let the comments slip away. I wanted to make sure that I got a video out for everyone, that was priority number one. So let's jump into video number one, which is Lazy Crafter's Guide to Painting Terrain. Let's go. So the first three comments are Johnny Campaign Terrain and Jacob. Thank you all so, so much for the kind words. I'm really glad that you all appreciate the videos. That's what keeps me going every week. I, I, there, there's no words that I can say to, to get you to understand how much the kind words make my day, make it easier to do this, make this more fun. Thank you so much. Seriously, I mean it. Moving on to Spencer and Gary. So Spencer gives me a bunch of super good ideas for videos. Stay tuned. It is very likely that I will end up making those because I have some great ideas for all of them. Painting is absolutely my weakness. I've hated it since the beginning. I make terrain and it ends up sitting unpainted for so long just because I just, I use big grandiose words and say that I detest the process of painting. It's still way more fun than doing just about anything else, but painting is definitely the part of the process that I enjoy the least. So it's always nice to you know connect with somebody out there when they tell me that they feel the same way. The one tip that I can give is if painting is your weakness, do what I did and find as many shortcuts as you can to make the process still look good, but get you done as quickly as possible, that's all you can do. Now, Gary, he says that I didn't use washes. Why is that? I will tell you a funny story. The first building I ever did, I was following uh, Black Magic Craft, which of course everybody knows how much I love his work. <laughs> well, I was following it to a T and he uses a lot of washes and I used it on my first building and I made my own wash, so it's my fault. But the results were atrocious. They were so bad, it looked hideous. And I basically wrote washes off for like the first two years of my crafting. So actually I try to use washes as little as possible. You can call it a style if you want. I just call it laziness and trying to safeguard my terrain. Certainly now that I've started to use real washes, something you know made by GW or, or any of the, the, the really good paint companies, I've realized that my wash was garbage anyway, so it didn't work. But that's the result. You will notice that a lot of times in my projects and builds, I don't use washes. And that's why. I'm just scared of them. <laughs> uh, Matt, I could definitely go with more contrast. That is the challenge of my painting process always. I'm aware of it. Contrast is the number one thing that I'm lacking. I always seem to go high contrast and then it just looks like I bleached my project out or the super high end is so bright that it looks like zebra, like black and white in lines. So that's certainly something that I have to get better at as a painter. Any suggestions? 
Drop that into the comments down here. Like I said, any tips on painting, I'll take them. Also, thank you for the kind words. Corey and Drew, you guys rock. Thank you for the kind words. Tom, I absolutely could do videos where I go that next step. One thing that I certainly wanted to do with this video was to show the bare bones way that I know how to make sure that it looks good, at least my standard of good, but isn't overwhelming. And there was a huge part of me that actually wanted to make this video where I showed a lazy version and then a less lazy version. But the video ended up being 25 minutes anyway, which was a long video for me. But you know it, the sky is the limit with this stuff. And I'm sure that there will be videos that come out on the channel where I go that next extra step at some point. Also, kind words, you're awesome, thank you. Lastly, Silver and Nikos. Again, more kind words. It is really nice for me. I'm sure it is boring as heck for everybody out there, but it's really nice for me uh, to get to look at all of your kind words. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Moving on, next video. All right, the next video is the epic DMing dice tray. This is a kind of a funny video. I ended up making it solely because I almost had a panic attack one day when I was DMing because I had this big pile of dice and it was just, so stupid overwhelming. I literally picked my head up and looked at my better half and was like, I don't care what video I'm supposed to film this week, I'm making a dice tray. I, it was just like, no questions asked, I had to clean up all my dice. Love dice, hate when they're a mess. So, let's move on to the comments. Let's start with Travis. You wanna see how I made my Tracina map? Well, let's talk about that for a second. The Tresina map is one of the best things I've ever done. Uh, it's one of those projects that I am just insanely proud of and the, the, the process of making it was both stressful and a joy and really exciting. And it is a testament to a thing that honestly, I just really believe down to my core, which is this hobby, this beautiful, amazing hobby is built in the idea that you have talents. You, every single one of you out there has talents that you don't realize that are way better than anything that I could do or Jeremy from Black Magic Craft or anybody. They are your own unique talents. And I think that using those to craft cool stuff is literally what makes this hobby so great. And this map was mine. I needed a map that I could show my players of the world that I played in. I made an incarnate map a long time ago and it was very, Let's go with mediocre. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a professional map maker. I'm not a cartographer. I don't, you know, I'm certainly not an artist in that regard at all. So when I made the Tracina map, it was using the talents that I had cultivated to make something like that. And all of that said, coming back to your point, you know there is a video coming where I show how to make that map or a map like it, I guess I should say. I just haven't decided when I'm gonna make it. Stay tuned. Of all the videos that I promise is coming in this video, this one is absolutely at the top of that list. So, ha, hilarious. I should have read forward in the comments, both Elon and Nick, uh, both commenting about the map as well. See my previous post, or rant. Thank you for the kind words. Ricky, thank you for your kind words. And my DM screen is Amazing, that is actually something that my dad made me. He made it for me for Christmas a few years ago. I got tired of having the short, small DM screens, you know, the ones with like the cardboard and the writing and stuff on the inside. And I was ooing and aahing over Matt Mercer's DM screen, but I had some things that I wanted different. My dad is actually a woodworker. He does Civil War era drum restoration. Uh, he's a monster. I hope that when I'm his age that I am as prolific with work and focused and dedicated to crafts as he is. He really is uh, a huge inspiration for me, but he surprised me with it for Christmas one year and it is so unbelievably amazing and I don't know what I would do without it. Uh, I don't know what I would do without him. So I don't know that I'll ever do a video on how to make it just because working with wood is certainly not my expertise, but I'll definitely think about a way that maybe I could get uh, a video put together where he and I talk about it. That actually might be a really cool video concept and something that until I saw your comment, I had never really thought about. Uh, I'm sure he has a bunch of good stuff to say. So um, stay tuned, that might happen. Token, 
let me tell you, I am glad that you enjoyed this video. I'm glad that you will get some kind of use out of it like I got out of it. And boy, those uh, Crown Royal bags are gonna look a lot nicer when they're individually, completely OCD separated and everything is not touching. Rick, Cindy, and Joe, thank you so much for the kind words. Yeah, this definitely was a different video. I hope that people get a lot of use out of it. But honestly, this was one of those videos that I made for me and hopefully other people can enjoy it. So again, thank you for the kind words. Also, Joe, never too many dice, never too many dice, but specifically, unarguably, and a concrete fact, die-hard matte dice are absolutely the best dice in the world. This is a hill I'm willing to die on. Leave it in the comments below if you disagree. Earl, thank you so much for your kind words as well. Everybody needs a dice tray. Make it, make it, make it. Token, holy crap, two comments, you are amazing, and I don't know why I didn't think about some kind of like, I mean, I don't use a tablet, but I don't know why I didn't think about like a cell phone holder. And then I could have certainly done something where it was like mini holders or like, like you know how you can buy dice in the little clear plastic trays? If I could make something that would have like slid down so you could set your minis and then put the little, so it even like protects your minis if you like picked your dice tray up and moved it around, your minis wouldn't fall. That'd be so sick. Thank you for the idea. A little late now though. Maybe the next dice tray build I do. Sarah, thank you so much for your kind words. You need pencils. Uh, I thought about actually making them stand up. That might have been a little nicer now that I've been using the dice tray for a little bit. I, I find myself having to reach and kind of fish around for the pencils. If I would have stood them up maybe, that would have been a little better. But yeah, gotta have pencils and markers and all that stuff. Gene, that is so awesome. I wish that I was good at working with wood. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, my dad is actually the wood guy. I'm spending more of my time with foam. I do truly believe that I think wood is the right way to go. And if I had the skill to work with wood, I would prefer to have the dice tray built out of wood. But if you make it out of wood, that would be awesome. And I think it'll probably end up being a lot better than mine. But I'm glad that you liked the video. Thank you so much. Next video. All right, so the next video is the Farm Fields Quick Craft. A little bit of insight back behind this video. Honestly, this is a video that exists because so many people asked. Um, this is not a video that I would have made kind of on my own because I don't really particularly think that my farm fields look that good. I'm not trying to be like a downer on myself. They certainly get the job done, but they were never something that when I pulled them off my shelf uh, to lay in front of my players that I thought, man, these are, you know, gonna wow them or blow them away or anything. So many people asked, I decided to make the video and I'm really glad that I did because I've gotten a lot of cool feedback from it. Let's dive into the comments. Ricky and Jacob, thank you so much for your kind words. Really awesome to hear. I'm gonna definitely try and come up with a way to make my own version of a more advanced field. I've got at least one idea, but I've got a couple more that I'm kind of trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. So certainly, a it probably won't be a quick craft because I don't think it's gonna end up being quick, but I certainly am going to be making a more advanced crop field. How soon, I'm not sure, but it's definitely coming. Next comment is Ezreal, and I'm just gonna start this by saying every single person watching this video needs to go to that comment and read it. It's amazing. I learned so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to type that all out um, because A, I know that it was not something that you sat there and blasted that out in five minutes. You came up with good, concise ways to say everything and I am so stoked. It's something that I am gonna try for sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome comment. You should comment on more of my stuff and help me get better. Appreciate it. Earl, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Like I said earlier, definitely the crop fields that are more advanced is coming. I just gotta figure out how I wanna do it and the best way uh, to put that into a video and get it out to everybody. So, stay tuned. Two copper pieces. First of all, great name. Second of all. <laughs> Next up, we got the homie Gnome Depot. We're gonna take all of his comments and lump them together because boy, you crazy. Crazy. Throwing so many comments on my videos, I love it. You're a hero. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, first, he talks about the cool cottage in the background. That is actually a piece that I didn't make. Um, I got it a long, long time ago in a set of Civil War soldiers. It just was kind of coincidence that it fit and uh, kind of worked with my D&D &D builds. I would like to make something that looks like that. So, again, stay tuned. I don't know if it'll happen immediately. It's not super high on my list, but that is a video that I would like to make because that cabin does look super dope. Uh, I'm glad you liked it. Next up with Gnome Depot, he says you can actually put water on the back of the piece and that will unwarp it. I've never tried that. Sounds like it makes sense. 
I should certainly try that. I will, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, that actually makes a ton of sense because if the moisture is pulling it one way, moisture should pull it the other way. I wonder if it would fight back against the glue. Uh, let me know down below if you've actually like had some good success with it because that would make life super easy and you don't have to worry about breaking your piece. That's awesome. So talking about the thickness of the dirt paste, I'm not sure whether there's a right or a wrong answer there. Certainly the thinner you make it, the more it's gonna pull down and then it'll look less chunky and chopped up. I like the chunkier and chopped look because I think that it makes it more look like a like a freshly tilled field. Man, these comments are giving me so many good ideas. I'm gonna have to like get a notebook or something and start keeping track of them because it's like information overload for me right now. Okay, moving on. Drew, thank you. I think that they are maybe not sick, but they are certainly functional, but I appreciate the kind words. Douglas, check out, as I said before, the advanced field tutorial is coming. Not sure when, but stay tuned. It will be out at some point. Johnny, I'd super, super, super think that seasonal terrain is awesome, but it's only good once you have a good base of terrain that you can kind of use for all seasons. Now, obviously I put grass on this, which makes it not an all season terrain, but it is a three season terrain, at least I think so. So what you could end up doing is you could basically make these exact same fields with some different things like just using like a snow paste or something. Um, but in that advanced field tutorial, maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit of a side note on making them more seasonal terrain. And I mean, that would be, I mean, pretty awesome to have a full set of like fall, spring, summer, winter, seasonal fields that you can just pull out the right ones that you need when you need them. That would be pretty sick. So maybe, we'll see. Also, Gnome Depot, coming back in. That's actually four comments, hiding in the, uh, hiding in the drop downs. I appreciate you, homie. Alexander, thank you for the kind word. Super appreciate it. Rick and Cindy, like I said before, video is definitely coming. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, it will be coming out eventually, I promise. Loremaster, that is a very good idea. That's gonna be bubbling around in the old brain cauldron. I had a different way in mind that will be in the video when it comes out, but this could be really cool also. Good looking out. Dang boy, Gnome Depot. Comment number five on this video. Heroic proportions, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Yours is another really great idea, and I think it could be used really well to make crops. I have so many ideas on how I could make this advanced crop fields tutorial video, and you guys are just making it better by throwing a whole bunch of ideas at me. This is so awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're moving on to our final video that we're looking at comments at in this video. That was a lot of stuff. All right, so we're moving on to the video. That is my tower build. I seriously, this is the best thing I've ever made. I felt so strongly about that that I made this video. And honestly, I don't know that the video even does my excitement for it justice. Very few projects will I get this excited about that I've made, but this is one that I really put my, I, you know, I put everything that I had into it. So it means a lot to me and I'm glad so many people enjoyed the video. Uh, so let's dive into the comments. Tom. Before I even address Tom, there's a bunch of familiar faces uh, that I keep seeing over and over and over in the comments, and that is so awesome. Thank you for coming back week in and week out. It means the world to me that we're starting to build just a little community of people that I know some familiar faces and familiar comments. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but so on to Tom's comment specifically. Tom, thank you so much for your kind words. Obviously, you know the deal with placing bricks. It's just the way to do it. I don't think there's any other way unless you're in a rush, but I, I think that it's still worth it to take the time and do the bricks. So thank you for the comment. Fox Toxic, yeah, it actually was in the intro a long time ago when the intro was way too long. And <laughs> I don't know why anybody sat through that whole thing. But yeah, that, that was one of the reasons that I had it in the intro was because it was something that I was so proud of. And I knew I would do a video on it eventually. Uh, so I hope that the waiting was worth it and that when you actually got to see what I could do as a video for it, that you enjoyed it. Thank you for the kind words. Planet, Token, and Drew, thank you all for the kind words. Really, really appreciate it. As for Token, I'm glad that you think that it's transferable into a lot of different games. Uh, probably my biggest criticism of the piece is that I was afraid that it was so specific that I couldn't use it over and over and over again. But honestly, I think that comes from the fact that I am more of a D&D and role-playing game player than a war gamer. But uh, as far as war games go, I would imagine you could just use it over and over and over again. Drew, 700 is so cool. It is unbelievable to me that there are 700 people out there who would look at this mug week in and week out. That's so awesome. For everybody who has subscribed, 
Thank you so much. Moving on, Ricky, I'm really glad that you liked the video. You certainly should challenge yourself to this. I think it will do every crafter a lot of good and the good positive feelings that you'll feel about yourself after you finish it is so worth it. Just the amount of times that I can pull that down off my shelf and show someone and be like, yeah, this is something that I did makes all of the stress and frustration and, and work that I put into it worth it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Rick and Cindy, Jayer, Christopher, and Spencer, thank you all so, so much for your kind words. Every comment is so awesome to hear. I keep saying thank you a lot, but I just, I have no other words for it. Thank you. Alexander, appreciate you. Drop the like button. Love it. Moving on to Bo's comment. So this is one that actually I'm really excited to talk about. Um, and I hope that uh, this is something as interesting for all of you as it is for me, but I think that it's really wild to watch how channels grow and develop and also the nostalgia that you have for a channel um, as it grows. So I started watching Black Magic Craft a long time ago, back when his production quality was a lot less, there was a lot going into it. Um, and I can say, that I never understood how much goes into making a YouTube video until I started this channel. I think he was really, really personable early on and he felt like somebody who I would love to have sitting at my D&D table playing games with me, which I thought was a really exciting and interesting way to learn. And I, I agree. I think that definitely as it's become more of a business for him, he's definitely put more and more ads out um, because he's trying to make ends meet and I get that. I have absolutely nothing but respect for that decision, but I also understand how some people who want to go back to that time where it felt like he was more that guy just sitting at your D&D table who happens to be really talented at crafting, I can see that. I hope that this channel stays at the trajectory that I am now. I, I like to make videos and I like to talk to all of you and, uh, and share my experiences and hopefully that's something that doesn't happen to this channel, but I expect everyone to let me know if it does and uh, I will do my best to make sure that it doesn't. So moving on to Alexander, I will just tell you, I certainly don't worship the guy, but I do have a lot of nostalgia for what it was like um, in the early days of that channel when I was just learning how to make dungeon tiles and, and his versions of cliff stackers and all that stuff. It's nostalgia, I think, is, is where it all comes from. So I just really liked his content. I still do like his content, it's just different now. Bo certainly comes back. I, I think, like I said, it's not necessarily a crazy big personality. I just think Jeremy reminds me of someone that I would want to have sitting at my D&D table. And I think that that resonated with a lot of people. He just seemed personable. I hope that people feel that way about me. At least that's what I'm trying to do, so. Uh, and then we're closing it out with the homie Gnome Depot. I think this is just appropriate because he comments on all the videos and I always see his uh, icon pop up, which is awesome. I appreciate all of the kind words. DM Scotty was somebody that I watched a lot of and then obviously Jeremy has been a catalog that I have watched front to back more than once. I'm glad that you like the production quality and all that stuff and I hope uh, that I keep being able to put videos out for you all uh, for years and years to come and that you all will enjoy it and keep coming back and hopefully don't get burnt out on me. But that is the end of this video. Again all that said I want to apologize that it's been a month since I've been able to comment. I'm going to get better about that. I promise, I promise, I promise. Um, but other than that, if you like this content, definitely subscribe. Leave me a like down below. Comment questions. I will do my best to answer all of them. And if I don't, hopefully I could make another video like this, especially if people like it. If this is something that you would like to see, certainly comment down below about that as well. But that is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching and we'll catch you next week.